I apologize for the, they're, they're not very graphically uh, good slides, but hopefully they have good and meaningful content that everyone finds uh, useful. Is, is English okay? Yes. yes? Awesome. So uh, as Adil said, I have 20 years of experience in business operations and customer success. Uh, I've worked for companies like American Express, um, for Samsung, for Philip Morris International, um, and I spearheaded the launch of Uber in Lahore and in Karachi as well. For the past six years, I've been working at Automatic. Um, who here is familiar with Automatic? Who knows a little bit about it? So what we do primarily is we provide services for hosted WordPress websites, uh, among other things as well. So we have Jetpack, we have e-commerce. So there's a whole range of products that Automatic currently offers. So I've been working as a happiness engineer there. And recently, the, the trend with AI is that if you don't adapt, that you're going to be left behind. So I'm also part of the company's inaugural AI squad. And what we're looking to do is to leverage AI and really enhance the effectiveness of our product so we can get better services delivered for our customers. So just a quick introduction. And if we have the mic, so just a quick show of hands. How many of you have used AI in the past week? Put, put your hands up high. Let's see. Okay, good. There is very good percentage of people. Awesome. Awesome. If so, what are you using it for? Let's, let's just pick five people at random. What are you using AI for? So who, who wants to share what they're using AI for with the rest of the, the group? We have one here, one here. One year. <laughs> so please. Thank you, Lee. Uh, for IT proposals. And, okay. Uh, help me for. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I'm using uh, AI for to understand the code, and uh, I want I want to develop some Chrome extension with the help of ChatGPT and AI. Okay, you've developed a Chrome extension. Uh, just a quick I question. have I have uh, zero knowledge of coding, especially in Chrome extension, and uh, I have uh, published two Chrome extensions, which I totally made with the help of ChatGPT, and I'm uh, publishing the next one. Uh, very good. Let me explain what what actually does that. Uh, that extension actually uh, fits images from uh, unsplash.com. Okay. And I have named the extension images everywhere. When uh, someone is using the extension, we have just to click the icon and there is a search box for that. So if you need any sort of image, just type name and here will be a list of images. You can uh, download directly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very good. Okay. Uh, let's get two more. Yeah. Who, who else is using AI? What are you using it for? Let's go to that side. So one person is using it for coding, another person is using it to uh, build content and proposals. I have used open AI in WordPress to okay. generate emails for clients. Emails for clients, okay. It's a portal uh, on the WordPress website where there are multiple numbers and what they have to do, they have to generate, they have to give the signups and the email is going to be generated. Okay, awesome. So you're using it basically to write copy. Okay, awesome. Let, let's have two more. We have one. So who else wants to share what they're using AI for? Okay, as a coding assistant. Perfect. Ajit, uh, uh, proposals generate for me or especially as a coding assistant. Awesome. Most of the time. Awesome, great. And now a question. We, we have one more. I, I think he wants to share as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to teach prompt engineering uh, to MS master's class. And I would like to share two examples. I have designed a collection of prompts in which a student can write the question that is given by the faculty person and his program, his or her program. And ChatGPT will identify step by step what mistake he did in the program 
and we'll also write the program for uh, the question that was given by the instructor. So, the problem that I want to solve is, in the class, if I do not have time to guide each and every student, he can himself or herself get the knowledge where he committed the mistake and learn by himself. Okay. And in image generation, I am teaching control lines where they can control image generation. So, these are the two scenarios. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm really impressed with, with how well aware everyone already is with AI. So now I have a question for, for someone who's not using AI. Is there anyone in the room who's not using AI right now? And if you're not, why are you not using it? Do you, do you want to share or you just, you're not using it? Okay. Anyone else who's not using it? Okay, good. I, but then, where, where do you fall in? I asked if you're using it. We have about 70% raise their hands. Now we have one person say they're not using it. So what about the rest? Are you using AI? Are you not using AI? And if you're not using AI... Okay. Well, the, the next slide then is for you. So how many of you are familiar with Oxford University? Everyone knows Oxford, great. So they have an institute called the Future of Humanity. In 2016, they got machine learning experts from all around the world together. They surveyed 352 machine learning experts. And based on the survey that they did and all of the investigative reporting that they did, when they studied what was already available in the market, what they assumed, again, this is in 2016, what they assumed is that by 2026, AI will be capable of writing school essays. By 2027, self-driving trucks will render drivers unnecessary. By 2031, AI is going to outperform humans in the retail sector. 2049, AI is going to be the next Stephen King. So who knows Stephen King if you've read any of his books? And 2053, the next Charlie Teal. Uh, the reason I mentioned Charlie Teal, you may not be aware of who he is. He's a, he's a world-renowned neurosurgeon. So the, the best and uh, most prominent machine learning experts in the entire world, they got together and they predicted that by 2053, again, 30 years from now, not that far away, that we'll be able to perform neurosurgery with AI. Just imagine where AI is going already. By 2137, this is 114 years away, it seems like a long time, but if you think about it, just in the generation of you, your kids, and then their kids, you're probably already there at 114 years. By 2137, AI will be able to automate all human jobs. The purpose of this isn't to scare you. The purpose of this isn't to say that the world is over, or if you've watched Terminator 2, that Skynet is coming. Right? Well, the purpose of this is for you to understand that you need to develop AI as a skill. And in every field, it has an application, as it has an application in WordPress. And what you need to do today is start adopting that skill in your day-to-day. -day. Someone is using it already, I'm sure, you know, this says by 2026, and they predicted this 10 years ago. But 2023, I'm sure you could write majority of your school essays today using ChatGPT. If any of you are students, have you used AI for your assignments? It's okay, your teachers won't mind. I'm sure they use AI to grade your assignments as well. So, in terms of what AI is capable of doing today, they're, they're three years behind on what they predicted in 2016. Just imagine how fast AI is developing. And that's what really the crux of my presentation is today, that I'm not a developer by profession. I don't know any PHP code. I don't know JavaScript. I do know HTML and CSS. But I, wasn't, I was never able to create a plugin myself. I'm not a developer. So what I did was, I, I started with a problem. Whenever you generally work on developing something, you start with one problem and then you figure out how do I fix that. So <clears throat> everyone I'm sure must use some form of task management in their life. You have some application that you use, whether it's iPhones, 
reminders app, whether it's Google Tasks, whether it's Asana, um, or whatever you use. So what I use is a WordPress website. What I did was I created a uh, custom post type for myself, called it Tasks, and then I started entering tasks. And these are just some test tasks that I've entered for today. I threw them into four columns. I put them into query loop blocks, which are a part of the new full site editing and Gutenberg experience. And I created what essentially is known in the development industry as a Kanban board, right? So you start off with your statuses, these are my to-do tasks, my in-progress, my on-hold, and my completed tasks. One of the biggest challenges that, challenges that I had, you'll see the due date field is empty. Because this was something I was developing from scratch, the query loop block doesn't have a date field that I can enter, and then the date field doesn't turn red when the date is passed because it's not a proper task management system. I'm adapting it for something it wasn't actually built for, right? So I, I created the query loop block. I wrote about four or 500 lines of CSS to style this the way that I wanted. But now, I needed to get the due date. So here's the solution that I proposed to myself. Again, this is all without speaking to a developer. This is what I assumed I needed. I wanted to be able to add a custom due date field and I wanted to turn the text red if the due date has passed. So if the due date was yesterday, the task isn't complete, I want the due date to turn red so I know immediately this task is past due. Then I want to show the custom due date in a query loop block. This is more of a technical point. Uh, whenever you add a custom field in WordPress, it doesn't automatically show up in other blocks. You actually have to write some code to make it available to the default blocks that are there in WordPress. And then the third thing, you know, let's say you're lazy one day, you don't get up and you don't log in and check your uh, website. You don't go in and actually see, okay, what tasks are due. So I wanted an email reminder to be sent to me that all of these tasks are past due and you want to be able to remind yourself, click on a link and open it up. So this was the solution that when I sat down, I figured, okay, this is what I need to make my Kanban board effective for me. So what I did was I started writing prompts. So who's familiar with what prompts are? If you're using AI, you should be familiar with what a prompt is. Was there, do you want to share a little bit about prompts with us? Absolutely, awesome. Uh, it's an instruction, as was there said, that you're giving to the language model, which is AI, on what output you expect from it. What, what's amazing, and I really appreciate the presentation we just had, if you look in the Western world, if you look in America today, universities are already actually starting to create courses for prompt engineering. So we've had software engineering, we've had different types of classes. Now in America, you'll actually see for AI, they're creating classes called prompt engineering. So what you input into the AI model it is essentially going to dictate what you get out of it. So what I told AI was that I used the ACF plugin. It's the Advanced Custom Fields plugin. I added, a, I added a field called due date, and I assigned it the tasks post type that I had already created. So I'm telling this to the AI model that I'm now putting in the prompt for. I told AI that I want to display this ACF shortcode, but I want the text to turn red when the date has passed. So there's a date check that it needs to perform. I want to be able to style the, the field with custom CSS. So what that essentially means is I'm asking AI, I want you to assign specific classes to those values that you add, so then I can style it later. I can choose whatever style options I want. Again, I'm not a developer. There's no way I could have done this myself. So here's what AI gave me. And again, this is, you perhaps can't see the code, we'll share the slide. But it, it shot out about 26 lines of code in maybe roughly five, 10 seconds. So what I did was I inputted what I wanted. It's checking the due date here at the top. Then it's assigning the due date a particular format. And now it's assigning classes. <clears throat> based on what I told it, that I wanted to have a specific class if the date has passed, and I wanted to have a specific class in general so I can style the difference. The next thing in my prompt was, again, this is a technical point, that when you create a custom field in ACF, 
you have to tell AI or you have to tell the code to show this field in other blocks because it, that native support isn't there yet. So I said to AI, now I want to enable, again, I'm just in, in a trend from that next first prompt, I got the code, now I'm entering another prompt. Now I want to enable the use of ACF uh, within the native query loop block in Gutenberg. So it gave me just, again, a few lines of code here. Uh, I think, what, three or four lines of code. And essentially all it did is it made that field that I added available. So this is the result now. Again, with no development experience whatsoever, I was able to create custom code, add a plugin, and now you'll see that there's due dates for each one of these tasks. And you'll see that the three dates that have passed are red. This is something that, again, from a task management standpoint, was really important to me that when I look at my Kanban board, I want to see dates, I want to see red dates to know that these tasks are passed due. So not being a developer, I was able to create this plugin, implement this functionality on my website, and I'm using it today for my daily task management. The third thing is, so everyone sees the dates here, this is coming from custom code that I added using AI. Nothing, I didn't reach out to a developer, I didn't copy anything online, simply went to the chat GPT model, this is the free model. The chat GPT 4, if you're paying for it, it offers even better functionality, even better responsiveness. This is something that I did today with a free model, so just think about if you're a developer today. Just think about the possibility of you as a copywriter today. What you can get as output for your WordPress website. You can write blog posts, you can write plugins, you can write CSS. Uh, there was one uh, uh, member here who mentioned that they're using it to review their code already. That's, that's fantastic. Because AI understands the semantics better than a lot of times our QA teams do. And it can review it, and it can review it quickly for you, which is the real advantage. Again, this whole process of creating a plugin, which just six months ago, maybe a year ago, I wouldn't have been able to do, took me about 30 minutes. I was able to develop a plugin in 30 minutes, and that's something I hadn't been able to do for five years. So this is the power of AI for someone like me who doesn't have that skill set that you have already. So just imagine how much further you can take your skill set, how much further you can enhance your functionality. Now we have one more functionality left here. The, the last part is, again, a reminder that I wanted that email. I wanted an email to be sent to me whenever the tasks had passed due, whenever the tasks were read. I want a list email to be sent out to me. So this is the prompt I want. It's a little bit longer, again, in that same chain conversation that I'm having with OpenAPI, with ChatGPT. I'm saying that I want you to trigger an email with a list of posts where the date has passed. I'm telling it that the title should link to the actual post on the website. I'm telling it I want you to number the post so that there's some basic formatting there. The custom taxonomies that I've added, the categories, the statuses, the priorities, they should be there as well. I want you to maintain a hierarchical structure. So if there's a parent and child category, I want you to maintain that structure in the email as well. And schedule the email to be sent to me at 9 a.m. every single day. So this is again the prompt I'm putting into chat GPT. So it shoots out this code. So this is a little bit longer in terms of the code. It's actually meant every single day at 9 a.m., well, 9.05 a.m., the way that our phone jobs on, on WordPress.com work, they sometimes trigger at different times based on who actually visits websites. It shot out this email to me. And again, by no, by no stretch of the imagination am I saying that this is a, a, a well-formatted email or it looks really nice. You can do all of that with CSS and HTML later yourself. You can always style it the way you want. But the functionality is there. Every single day now I get an email that tells me what tasks are due, what tasks are past due. I'm able to click on them, open it up on my website, and then engage with that task however I, however I need to. And again, I was able to do this in a matter of maybe half an hour. Just imagine if you now today focus your efforts on creating business processes. So if you're someone who's in operations, you're a business manager, you don't have the technical expertise, that's perfectly okay. 
you're able to now actually start developing. Think of that business process yourself. No one knows the business process better than you for your business or for your website or for your specific requirement. So you're able to tell ChatGPT or whatever language model you're using exactly what code you want. And, and one of the greatest things that I've seen about the, the GPT model is that when the code generated isn't what you want, it's very receptive to feedback. You tell it, no, this code that you sent me, it didn't make the text red or it made it too big, I want you to make it smaller. I want you to format the email a different way. You know, that conversation in a software house can sometimes be very complicated because you're going back and forth between developers, between QA, but now with ChatGPT, you tell it exactly, you know, I don't like this. I want you to change the output, adjust the code. And in a matter of seconds, you get a new set of code. That's it. I just wanted to show you real, real quickly in half an hour how I was able to develop a plugin and do it without any development experience. So just really imagine the power of AI today. AI is a reality that's coming. And we can't put our head in the sand, we can't avoid it. It's going to shape the future of all of the industries that we're currently working in. So this is the time for us to really grasp that skill, understand that skill, and figure out how we can leverage that skill to make ourselves more effective, more efficient, and produce better results and deliver value. And any, any questions? about AI, about WordPress. Cool, awesome. Keep in touch. Uh, it was a pleasure being able to speak with you and, and I hope that if nothing today, you go home and you open up API or, or chat GPT open API and you start asking it what it can do for you. I, I think all of you will be pleasantly surprised. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Yeah. AI के साथ अपने आप को अपडेट करने का मतलब ये वो शुमार यही होगा कि हम इसको यूज़ करना शुरू करते हैं तो AI को यूज़ करें अपनी फील्ड के अंदर या फिर उसके लिए हमें AI को मतलब ये मॉडल्स के अंदर काम करना शुरू करना पड़ेगा अपने AI को बनाना पड़ेगा क्यों यार बड़ा अच्छा सवाल किया भाई ने so what he's asking is you know is the only way to learn AI start using it and my answer to that initially right now would be yes the reason is because AI is very new and it's rapidly changing. If anyone watched OpenAPI's dev day just like a month ago, they completely changed the game with the new bots that they introduced. And they're new bots and they're amazing functionality. So if someone tells you they're an AI expert today, I wouldn't believe them. Because OpenAPI has made the advancements in AI so quickly, it's hard to become an expert in three months. So the best way to learn what you can do with AI is to just play around with it. Ask it to write you a poem. Ask it to write you a book. Ask it to write you a blog post about the latest political situation in Pakistan. I'm sure you'll get a very fun answer. Right? So ask AI to just start doing tasks for you and you'll really see the power of what it's able to do. So I would say the best way to learn it today, absolutely, start using it. It doesn't have to be for anything specific. This, uh, this task that I created, this is not for anyone. This is something I use personally myself. But it made my life easier now because I can identify those tasks that are read. I, I think we have another question. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, अभी तो आपने एक नंबर दी है वो आपने अपने टास्क मैनेजमेंट के हवाले से दी कि मैंने ए को अपनी वर्डप्रेस में टास्क मैनेजमेंट के हवाले से इस तरह इस्तेमाल करते हैं तो अगर हम इसको कमर्शियली अपने क्लाइंट्स के लिए इस्तेमाल करना चाह रहे हैं तो आप कोई दो एग्जांपल दे दें मतलब दो सजेशन दे दें कि हम ए को किस तरह वर्ड के हवाले से अपने क्लाइंट्स की सर्विस बेस्ड किस तरह ए आई यूज कर सकते uh, absolutely, w wonderful question. So I know what a lot of companies are doing, WordPress hosting companies are doing, uh, whether it's GoDaddy, whether it's Automatic, uh, we're all looking at ways to leverage AI to provide support to customers, to provide faster support to customers. So let's say you build a product today, for example, you have a plugin, and you want to provide 
level one support for your plugin, but you don't want to hire five people. So you can leverage OpenAI's assistance bot, which they just launched a month ago, and you can leverage that technology to provide support to your paying customers. And what you'll find is that when you train the bot, you tell it what questions to ask, you tell it what questions to expect, it provides you with amazing answers, and you, just, you have to train it though. So in terms of how you can use it in a commercial setting, that's the same way you would use it in a commercial setting. Provide support to your customers, and your software developers can use it as an assistant to improve their code. They can use it to write code more quickly. I know QA departments across the software landscape, what, uh, what another one of our, our uh, attendees mentioned, they're using AI to already review code. So instead of having a QA team, what people are already doing is they're using AI to start reviewing code. Where are the lapses? Are the semantics wrong? Is there a critical error that's going to be thrown with this code? So there's so many possibilities, and something I, I know we don't have time now, but we can certainly talk once, the, once we're in break, and we can talk about that in more detail. Uh, another question. I, I think last one, because we just in the interest of time, I think. So that I have a question. Okay, okay. Okay, two more questions. Is that okay? Sir, currently I'm working as a WordPress developer, but at the same time I am a machine learning engineer and uh, I'm running machine learning from this university. Okay. From, from UCP? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so, my, my Sir, I am working on tools of generating AI okay. in algorithmic training. Okay. So, I have read and learned that yet no AI model has 100% accuracy. Sure. And here I can see that there are a lot of your sure. Also there are a lot of professionals. Sure. So you have discussed very uh, in very good way about the use of AI in WordPress. It is good. But as you know that AI don't have the hundred percent accuracy. Even I would say there are a lot of models they don't have even six percent accuracy. Sure. So if you will recommend the new comers to use AI in WordPress like that, then it will ruin their concepts of Coding, am I right? I, I think it's a good question. I want to go over the things. I think as we have discussed about the amounts of AI, you should also buy the new covers about the disappointments of AI. Otherwise, it may ruin the concepts of their coding. They can't enhance their coding skills by using AI. I, I, think, yeah. it's a, I think it's a great question. And one more thing. They uh, actually, for this time, we should not neglect the AI, we should work on it. I would say, we should AI hai, usko apna task karne ki istamal karna It may help us to make us efficient. Lekin, at the same time, point to AI hai, that many people will be able to use AI to use karne ke, like I am. You can see that you have to use AI to use AI. It is very good. I can use AI to 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 use AI It is easy. But, very skilled. I, wonderful question. I, and, and I think Thank that you. this is, um, and, and I appreciate that you, you have the courage to ask this question because it's a difficult question. And it's a question that's everywhere in the software industry right now. That you have developers who are concerned uh, that AI is going to take my job. AI is going to take my skill. I'm going to tomorrow not be able to use my brain and I'm just going to simply go to API, or open API, chat DP, or any language model, and say, do my work for me. I, I think there's two ways you look at this, right? The first thing is, in order for me to even build this plugin, I needed, I needed to have a very basic understanding of what WordPress is. I needed to know that I needed classes. I needed to know what functionality I wanted. So there's a certain amount of understanding you still have to develop. In, in my mind, it's, it's, I think you're right, today as AI is currently available, it's not 100% accurate. I absolutely agree with you. But right now, OpenAPI just made AI available to all of us within the last 12 months, really. Right? It's very, very new. And what I'm encouraging everyone to think about, what, what I'm encouraging everyone to think about is that AI is going to develop 
as fast as we develop it. If you know anything about what happened with the OpenAPI CEO, because he was moving so fast in development, the board removed him. But then Microsoft said, we'll hire you. And then his entire development team at OpenAPI said, we're going to resign if you don't bring him back. So OpenAPI right now, it's a, they're valued at $90 billion, OpenAPI. Again, 12 months ago, very few people even knew what ChatGPT was. So in 12 months, they've gotten the valuation. Their CEO came back, their entire team knows that we're going to shape the direction. So what, what this talk really is about is what is the possibility of what AI is going to become? I absolutely agree with you. Right now, as it stands today, AI cannot replace anyone in this room. But, but, and I think this is the really important thing that you and everyone else here has to understand. If I close my eyes and say AI is not going to replace me, I promise you it's going to be a matter of six months, six years. It might be 10 years. It might be 15 years. But eventually, AI will be able to do everything I can do better and faster than me. So what I have to do is I have to figure out today, how can I use AI to do my job even better? So if there's another developer who has your same skill set, he's able to build a plugin in one hour, for example, but you're able to leverage your same skill set and use AI to create a comparable plugin in 30 minutes, eventually, Again, I'm not saying this is happening tomorrow, but 15 years later, which developer would you hire in your software agency? They both have the same skill set, but one is able to leverage an API, or open API, and do their work faster, more effective. You're able to get that product to your customer faster. It's more effective. You're gonna deliver more value. A wonderful question. I, I keep getting the watch the thing they, they want me off. So we, we can certainly talk about this afterwards. I, it's a wonderful question, and I think it's a question we all need to think about. But open API, AI, this is all a reality. We're, we're gonna have to adjust to that reality in every industry. It's in support, it's in retail, it's in software development. We have to adjust to it. Uh, one, one more, do we have one? Do we have time for one more? Yes? We, we don't have time, but okay, <laughs> sorry. Assalamualaikum. So my name is Shiroz Khan and I am working as an HR manager at Nailtech.de. So I have a similar experience like you. So one thing I have done is that why I have done some pre-sales scripts and automate them. Okay. So I have done some research and obviously creativity is there. So I have done some suggestions. And I have done some suggestions. Salary is not a suggestion. But I have done some suggestions. So, I have helped him with the taxation slabs that we have worked on in Pakistan. So, income tax slabs, I have created a query generator. And second thing, I have created a code. Visual basic programming, which I have a non-technical person, I have generated a code. और साथ में मुझे वो कैसे इंसर्ट करनी है कैसे उसका मॉड्यूल बनाना है एक्सर में जाके वो सारा कंप्यूटर उसने मुझे बन रेड कर दिया था तो मेरा यहाँ पे क्वेश्चन है कि आपको क्या लगता है कितने अर्से तक एक जो अभी टेक्स्ट में मैं सारे कुछ आप दे रहे हैं पिक्चर्स क्या तक मैं ढूंढ़ा it, it, it's, a, it's a really hard question for me to answer. I, I don't know when, when AI will be able to replace what work we're doing, right? But the, the point of really what, what I was talking about, even if you look at that Future, uh, uh, future of Humanity Institute study, what, they, what they're mentioning is that AI is coming. It, it might take us five years to get there. It might take us 50 years to get there. But, but it's coming, it's a reality. So I don't know when it's gonna be able to replace the mundane task of, of filling out Excel sheets. Hopefully one day it takes everyone's salary and just multiplies it by two. Um, we can all hope for that day that one day AI just helps us get more, earn more. But 
I, I think what you can do is write what I know of myself is that Excel, even today, Google Sheets, even today, they have AI plugins that you can add to Sheets. Yes, uh, so it is giving a picture like write me or help me write it down. So, yeah. ah, so, so those plugins help you use AI to start creating Sheets even today. So that's already a possibility right now. How you further automate that is something that we could... Um, sir, I'm, I'm sorry, there... Everyone keeps holding their watch in front of me. Um, so I, I think it's time for me to leave. But I, I think that's already happening today. Maybe we can discuss it a little bit after the session, or, or, during, or during our tea break. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank, thank you so much. It was a pleasure.